Greetings and salutations. How are you today? Eh, me, I can't complain. I just came out here to check on my uh, tile job on the floor and um, uh, notes that the adhesive hadn't quite dried yet. And I came here and looked at this and it says here, wait a minimum of 24 to 72 hours before using or grouting your surface. One to three days. That is the Acropro Professional Tile Adhesive. Uh, sand wall and floor tile installations. Well, that doesn't seem very efficient. And uh, I've been doing a little bit more uh, research and looking at what other people have done. And um, I guess the question that I'm posing, and I don't even know if Steve even watches my videos anymore, but beekeeper, if you're out there, should I use thin set, a modified thin thin set, or mastic? Uh, I used a mastic on the floor, and uh, thinking that it would be a little more, um, thinking that it would be a little more pliable than uh, thin set. You know, since I'm building a rolling house, but I've seen people use uh, modified thin set, and I haven't reached out to them to see how effective it worked in small tile like this but uh, Steve if you're out there you know give me your 401 I, re I respect your opinion and anybody else that has any experience with the uh, small tile like penny tile or small triangular tile or small square tile in a uh, mobile situation like this what did you use you know God, I wish I would have thought about um, doing a Raptor liner before I went through all the trouble and expense of doing tile because Raptor liner seems like a really good idea right about now. Hell of a lot simpler. What else can I do? Well, let's go work on the Suburban, I guess. I guess I'll see if I can get the rad in today. Yeah. That uh, shroud over there is off the 85 that I used to have because it doesn't fit, which doesn't make sense because this is the radiator out of the 85. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I see why. Oh, you fucking idiot. Let's try to put it in upside down. Idiot! Yep. What a fucking maroon. Let me try this again. I'm a little bit frustrated with myself right now. But that's okay. It's typical. I'd do it right the fourth time. All right, well, after the fourth time, I got the shroud in and it clears. I can't go any further. I need to make a list of parts I need to get this thing at least in operating trim so I can take it for a drive. Um, hoses, clamps, that kind of thing um, to get this thing at least going to the point where I can drive it a little bit and see if it's you know even worth selling as a driver. And then, um, but the, for the rest of the day, it's 12.30 now. I think I'm gonna, cause it's so nice. It's the perfect temperature for spread and bondo. I think I'm going to go and get on the dart and start working on that again. 
You get cleaned up, get something to eat real quick, and I'll come back out here and start spreading some bondo. Okay. Moments later. couple of tips that I've learned throughout the years doing this kind of thing. Um, you see this kind of technique being done all the time in, in uh, hot rod shops where they put a skim coat on and then they use long blocks like this, only not as deformed as this one is. And uh, they use long, uh, long broad strokes to to make the panels as flat as they can possibly be you know these uh, 60s muscle cars aren't known for really tight panel gaps and especially so a body mopars um yeah the, the the panel gaps aren't great on these cars but if given enough time you can make them really nice um and doing a skin coat let you know, the reason why I'm doing this is because you can see, I think I mentioned this before, there's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole. There was a, a chrome molding strip that went on here, and there was a little clip that bolted through, and I filled those with weld. And when you do that, you're going to you're gonna deform the metal a little bit because of the heat of the welder. So you're going to have waves, and that's right on a body line. So you can see I've, I've had the, the body lines taped off. That does a couple of things. That gives you an idea of where to sand to. And now before, when, before this hardens, actually after this hardens, but before I start sanding on this, I'll retape those body lines and then I'll sand to them. And that makes a nice clean um, body line. And then, uh, 
and then I'll use my long block with 36 grit to get the basic shape and um, and I'll just I'll just keep doing that and by running a gloved hand across the panel you'll your hand will pick up any deviations in that panel at all if there's a if there's a low spot your hand will pick it up before your eyes will see it guide coat what's guide coat guide coat is you know you can buy it it's you know you, you pay up the, you pay a little bit for it but what I like to use is flat black paint just flat black paint and then uh, what you'll do is just you know stand back about two feet and just just a light dusting of the flat black on there and let it dry give it a half an hour let it dry and then you can come back through and uh, with your long board and just sand the guide coat off and if there's any low spots the low the uh, the flat black will stay so there's a spot where you need to add filler and repeat that process general rule of thumb is when you think you're about done sanding sand some more it's unfortunate but it's just the way it is but oh listen I don't know if you caught that, that boom, boom. For many years, I thought the, they must be doing some mining around here. But I've explored all over here, and there's no active mines here. And somebody on Facebook piped up and said, and said, what's those explosions I keep hearing? And somebody said, well, it's up at the, that's up at the nuclear test facility or at the artillery range up in, up in, uh, up by Mercury. Well, that's too far away. And it's, it's the sounds aren't coming from the north; they're coming from the west. Well, you know, the Air Force, N Nellis Air Force is to the north, but Edwards Air Force Base is to the west and south, and uh, they fly fighter jets between here and there through Death Valley. And there's portions of Death Valley where they allow supersonic low, f you know, low flight. So under 5,000 feet, you know, sometimes as little as 500 feet. Uh, and they do it at, you know, Mach, at the speed of sound. So if you hear explosions, if I'm filming out here today and you hear explosions off in the distance, those are not explosions, those are sonic booms. Fun facts, no one knows. Anyway, where is I going here? All right, so I have um, most of this rear quarter is ready to go, I think. Pretty sure. No, oh, I got a little ripple down here I need to address. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a guide coat on here and figure out where my spots are. Okay. That's all you need for a guide coat. So it's gonna look, it's gonna take a little bit for that to dry because it's pretty cool in here. When it does, I'll get out the block and I'll start sanding that, and it'll become painfully obvious where the low spots are, and that's where I can concentrate my efforts instead of filling that whole thing and then sanding 90% of the filler that I put on there off. Coincidentally, um, the majority of your body filler that you get is going to end up on the floor. It's just the way things are. Let me see here. Okay, looks like it's ready. sanding especially with heavy grits like 36 or 40 um, the temptation is to lean into the sandpaper and really hog off that material and take it down quick and the problem is is that um, this this paper is so aggressive 
that you can actually take off more than you want to take off, that means that means you're wasting material because now you got to mix up some more and put it back on. There. So um, let the sandpaper do the work. That's what it's there for. You can see I'm using uh, a, a crisscross pattern, a diagonal pattern, and I'm following this line here. I've kind of uh, established that with my round block just by running it up and following um, following that line up and then I'm working from that line out and to that line and then I'll come back over here and I'll do this one but I'm letting the sandpaper do the do most of the work and then when I get it down to a, where I can just barely feel the edges then I'll I'll switch to a you know like 80 grit but uh, still let the sandpaper do the work. I know it's hard to resist because I don't I don't like sanding any more than the next guy. I don't like wasting money either. Not high no more. We run a long board on this panel right here so we can find the low spots. Oh, well, this is going to show up. I got a low spot here, a low spot here. I'm not going to worry too much about this one. I got a low spot here, a low spot here. There's a high spot. And like that lead fill right there, that's a high spot. That's a panel where the rocker panel meets the quarter panel.
Did I happen to tell you how much I hate sanding? Because I do, you know, hate sanding. Let me just say this. Sometimes there's an advantage to having multiple projects going on at the same time because a lot of times it doesn't require a lot of money. It just requires some time and effort. And this is something that I've been putting off for many, many years and it needs to get done. Um, so I think, uh, you know, a month or so ago when I was doing an hour a day, you saw how much I could get accomplished in, in a week's time. I think it's time to reapply that principle and devote the first hour of the day when I'm fresh after the kids are off to school and I'm still fresh, devote the first hour of the day to go ahead and um, do some body work on this so I can get it in primer. I've got to finish this side. The other side's pretty much done. There's a couple of spots on the other side that need to be addressed. And, um, no, I already fixed that. Uh, and it should be just about ready for some epoxy primer, which I have. And I also have the Claussens. So I could conceivably, if I really stick, if, if I really stay committed to it, I could probably get this thing ready, at least ready for primer. I still got to sand the jams and stuff, but I probably get this thing ready for primer by, what is it today? Wednesday? Ah, uh, probably, probably not this week, but maybe next week. Uh, I've been saying that for what, the last three years. But I do know this for certain. If I don't keep working on it, it'll never get done. So <clears throat> I proven that principle for sure. So I guess all I got to say is if you, if you feel like you, you want to contribute and uh, to try to exploit some of these projects, there's, there's a few ways that you can support this channel financially. And if you already shop on Amazon, the easiest way to support this channel financially is just to buy stuff on Amazon going through one of the links that you'll see down in the description. Either some of the products that I feature in these videos, like I'll probably have some uh, Bondo or something in the description of this video. And if you need some Bondo, I like Evercoat. I'll go get you some. <clears throat> if you don't have any interest in Bondo and just need something like, I don't know, um, pick something. Plastic straws. Coffee filters. Go through that link and get your coffee filters or your plastic straws. And that way, the channel can earn a little bit of commission. I'll throw that money right back into these projects. And if you want to step up your, uh, your contribution game a little bit, there's also a PayPal link in the description where you can donate on a one-time basis. Or there's a Patreon link where you can become a patron at uh, several different um, commitment levels. If you want to support the channel that way, I'd really appreciate it. If not, that's okay. I know what it's like to be broke. And, uh, you know, if you, if you can't afford to financially support the channel, the other way you can support this channel is by smashing that like button and then sharing it with your vast social media network. Also... Underneath this window is a button that says subscribe. Click that and a little bell icon. That way YouTube will let you know the next time I upload a video. So until next time, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep the powder dry. Have a splendid day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Listen to this. Some of that brake fluid out of the header wrap.